All right, so I bought my first comic book collection of 2024, and I may have paid too much for it. So technically, I bought this collection at the end of 2023. It was December 30th, to be exact. But I've just been way too busy the first few weeks of 2024 to even take a look and really review what was in this collection. I did a quick you know, search of it when I was at the seller's house when I bought it. But really, I haven't taken a really good look at this collection since purchasing it. So when I arrived at the seller's house Saturday morning to take a look at this collection, none of it was organized. And it wasn't even stored in comic book boxes, right? There was maybe one short box that was really Worn, but the rest of them were in like Tupperware containers and other random cardboard boxes. And these are the types of collections that I really like to look at. You have no idea what might be in there. And you know, when they're not sorted or anything, like the next book that you're flipping through could be a gem. You never know what you're gonna find next. All right, now we're not gonna go through every book in this collection. There's a total of 606 books all together. All right, first up in the collection, we are taking a look at some Archie style books. We got Archie number 135 here, nice 12 center. I'm not gonna talk about every one of these books. I'm just gonna flip through these real quickly. These aren't anything that I necessarily collect. And most of these comics are actually going to be put up for sale in my antique booth that I have. I rent a small booth at a local antique mall and sell comics out of there. Right now I've got about seven or eight short boxes of comics and uh, just get a monthly sales report and sell them that way. Um, and this collection is just a purchase mostly for additional inventory for that collection and uh, sale selling there at the um, antique mall. A really early Dagwood here, nice 10 center we've got. Pretty beat up though, like a lot of these, you know, this early golden age 10 cent comic here um, with the uh, chewed up corner there. I thought these were kind of cool, these Jughead as Captain Hero and then there's also an Archie as a different um, character as well. Early life of Archie, I believe this is number 25. Annual here. And then last up is this Buzzy number 59. Not necessarily an Archie comic. As you can see, it is a uh, DC comic here, but another cool Tencent um, Archie style comic. All right, next up is just a handful of some of the Western style comics in this collection. There are a lot more like key and gold key comics that are uh, featuring characters like Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, things like that, but they're in pretty beat up shape. I don't know a whole lot about them either, so I decided not to put them in this video. I need to do some more research on them to see which ones uh, bring any money or have any value. I'm really just not very familiar with that. Here's a cool 10 center here, the Straight Arrow from Me Comics. And another one there. Again, a lot of these older 10 cent books are pretty beat up. Couple copies of this Texas Rangers in action here. All right, moving on to some bronze and silver age horror here. No pre-code horror in this collection, unfortunately, but just some cool DC and Marvel titles here. Creatures on the Loose here. Some Charleston books as well. Really like this Tomb of Darkness number nine here. And then these weird war books that actually bridge the gap between this horror style book and our next category up, war books.
This is another genre of book that I'm not too familiar with, but we've got titles here from multiple publishers, including Charlton and DC mostly. All right, continuing on, we have a ton of GI combat from DC. Now this title started off as GI combat, but then morphed into the haunted tank GI combat. Tencent fighting forces here, which then morphed into the losers. And that wraps it up for our war books. All right, next up are what I kind of consider like adventure slash superhero books here. I'm not very familiar though with this American comics group um, publisher especially this Adventures Into the Unknown title. There's quite a few of them here. If I am passing anything up that I should be stopping on and paying more attention to, please let me know in the comments below. Again, a lot of these are genres that I'm just not very familiar with, and I could easily be passing something up that is of note or a key issue or something like that. So definitely let me know in the comments below. This is another publisher I'm not familiar with, this Tower Action Series, Tower Publishing. Put a couple number ones in here. I love how they advertise no ads, all action from cover to cover. Next up are a set of books that I consider to be somewhat promotional type comics. This one here and the next one are both compliments of Radio Shack. We've got some other options in here as well, including the Sport Thrills. Came from this Tuttle Scott shoe stores, and this piece of paper here is actually like glued onto the cover. Um, and we got a depiction of Joe DiMaggio on the front there. Just kind of a cool promotional item that was given out. And speaking of shoes, we have Bluebird Shoes Presents, Timmy and the Timid Ghost. We've got Bluebird Comics here. I'm Assuming that is in association, obviously, with Bluebird shoes, but I've got quite a few of these Bluebird comics here and multiple copies of some of these. Another title we have is Atomic Mouse from Bluebird shoes. Got quite a few copies of this one. 
I'm guessing these were like handed out to kids when they were taken to shoe stores, you know, whether it was to help parents get through um, shopping for shoes with their kids or something similar to that, but just kind of cool, something I hadn't ever seen, at least these Bluebird comics versions. All right, now moving on to just some DC comics in general. These are some cool ones that I picked out of the collection. Again, there were 606 comics in here. Not gonna be showing all of them off, but these were just some cool ones that I picked out um, from DC and we'll have Marvel up next. Couple Whitman variants here. Okay, on to Marvel. Okay, now this is just a random group of comics that I thought were pretty neat for a couple of reasons. First up is this Black Magic from 1960. This depicts a story of Hitler, and it actually has some decent value. I've found uh, sold books on eBay going anywhere from 60 to $80 on this one, so kind of a unique book there. Another one that's kind of odd is this Hello, I'm Johnny Cash from Spire Christian Comics. Another one that goes from 20 to $30, kind of a cool cover there. I love Space Ghost and was happy to see this Space Ghost number one in the collection. That one's staying with me. Not gonna sell that one. I'm not a big Youngblood fan. However, I thought it was cool that there was a signed J. Lee copy in here along with the Certificate of Authenticity. Um, this was a 10,000 signature series. This is number 8307. It's not in the best of shape because uh, it's just seen some uh, wear and tear over the years, but cool nonetheless. And then I thought this was pretty neat. Um, this is World's Finest number 195, and this is just a cover here, which isn't very significant. However, the actual copy of this is somewhat significant because it happens to be a double cover, which makes me wonder, is this third cover that was loose near this copy originally attached, making this a triple cover. I don't know. Let me know if you've ever encountered a double or triple counter in your collection, but I thought that that was pretty neat. And then last up is this issue number one of Crazy Magazine, um, very similar to Mad, Sick, Cracked, things like that. Um, I've actually got a couple of copies of this and I've picked them all up in collections that I have bought. As you have most likely noticed already, a lot of this collection was DC based. And while I'm not a major DC fan or very knowledgeable, honestly, about DC, I knew that I had to pull these out to showcase them. And we've got a couple early action comics and just some really cool covers and books here that I was excited to see in this collection.
All right, now moving over to some of my favorite books of this collection. We've got some Silver Age Marvel books here, including this Avengers 42, Avengers 44, Fantastic Four 65, Fantastic Four 66, Fantastic Four 68, Tales to Astonish 37. This is actually the third appearance of Ant-Man. Tales of Suspense 70. Tales of Suspense 71. Tales of Suspense 79. And then a coverless Hulk annual number one. This is actually the second copy that I have of this book that is coverless. I think I picked one up at a local comic shop for like a dollar uh, about a year or two ago. And then this one just happened to be in there. I think it's kind of funny that I have two coverless copies now of this book. All right, now I saved my three favorite books from this collection for the very end here. Um, and that's just because they are two of my favorite comic books in general. And the first one up is this X-Men number 36. X-Men number 36 just happens to be the first appearance of Mechano. And we obviously see that on the cover of this book here. All right, the last two books in this collection are definitely my favorites. And the first one up is Amazing Spider-Man number 52. This is the third appearance of Kingpin, and I just love this cover. It's got some awesome artwork by John Romita on here, and I just can't get enough of this situation. And finally, we have the last book up, and it's a continuation of that Amazing Spider-Man run. Issue number 53, a cool cover here with Spidey and Doc Ock battling it out with, again, amazing artwork by John Romita Sr. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I wasn't sure if I paid too much for this collection. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of books in here that are going to add up to over what I paid for this collection, but after I put in all of the time and effort into looking up all of these books that I'm just not familiar with, finding their values, figuring out what their condition is, and things like that, it's gonna take me quite a bit of work to get my money back. That doesn't mean that I'm not gonna be able to do it, it's just gonna take some time. Luckily, I have that booth at the Antique Mall, and I sell books pretty frequently there, and I think adding a lot of these books to that inventory is going to help me move books uh, from this collection quite quickly, because I think there's a lot of books here that would be really interesting for people to find at an Antique Mall. I'll probably also throw some of these up on eBay as well just to get rid of some of the more higher end books that I don't want sitting out in the loose at the antique mall. Now, how much did I pay for this collection? Well, first of all, the seller in both of his ads mentioned that he wanted someone to buy the whole collection and that he wasn't giving a price on it and he wanted offers to be made on it. That's always kind of a tough situation going into a collection like this. And like I mentioned, I had to flip through this collection pretty quickly um, that Saturday morning and come up with a price there um, to start with. And everything that I had seen in those pictures made it seem like this was gonna be a pretty low-end collection that I wasn't really excited about paying much for it. So my initial offer on this collection was $250. Now that was based on just seeing a couple of these older um, Marvel books that I saw, obviously the Amazing Spider-Man and X-Men books here, some of those other Silver Age books from both Marvel and DC. But again, I didn't stand there and just find values right there in front of him. He actually had an appointment to get to um, like 30 minutes after I arrived. So I really only had about 20 minutes to take a look at this collection. So like I mentioned, I offered $250 for this collection. Now the seller definitely wanted to get more out of that collection and immediately said that his lowest price he would go for was 500. Now I thought about this a little bit more knowing that there's a lot of Silver Age books in here. And even though they're low condition, I can get a couple bucks out of each one of them either at my booth at the antique mall or on eBay. And with over 600 books in this collection, I knew I'd be able to make my money back. It was just gonna take some time. I think I let the excitement of buying my first collection of the year get one on me because I did end up paying $500 for this collection. With there being 606 books in this collection, that equals out to paying about 82 cents per book. It's definitely not the best value per book that I've ever encountered when buying a collection, but like I said, I will definitely be able to make my buddy back on this. It's just gonna take some time. All right, so that's my first collection buy of 2024. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to check out the ones that I have linked here on the screen. One of them is going to be where I purchased a whole storage unit. It's my most popular video on my channel and there were comic books. 
All right, well, I appreciate everybody watching. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this, be sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm actually very close to hitting 1,000 subscribers. And when I do, I'm working on a 1,000 subscriber giveaway. So make sure you are subscribed to be eligible for that prize.